In this presentation, we will work a problem for controllable variance and volume variance. Our information will be up top. We're going to enter that into the blue areas in the worksheet down below. Our information up top includes the plan production in units, 10,000 units, capacity level 80%, capacity level in units is going to be the 12,500. Note that we're going to have the information up top, and this is typically what you're going to want to do if you're taking information from a book problem or any area. You want to put it up top and make sure when you do so, you have the description, the numbers in a separate area, the units and whatnot in a separate cell so that you can refer to the cells as you start to go through the problem. That'll make things much easier. Then we've got the overhead production budget. We have the production in units, the 10,000 units, standard direct labor hours, 26,000, and then the budgeted overhead, the variable costs, which include the indirect materials, indirect labor, power, maintenance, and then the fixed overhead costs, those that do not change the rent and uh, factory equipment depreciation, supervisor salaries, then the total overhead being the variable and fixed components. Then we have the actual numbers on this side. Note that the actual operation happened at 90% of capacity uh, or 12,250 units. When considering the actual numbers, remember you want to keep in our mind, we got to say, okay, the budgeted information happened before the time period. Now the time period must have passed because of course we have the actual numbers and we would only have those after the time period had passed. And our goal or what's probably going to happen is we are in some way going to be comparing the budgeted or standard numbers to what actually happened. The actual cost for indirect materials, indirect labor, power, maintenance, rent, depreciation, supervisor salary, and the total overhead costs here. First, we'll consider the controllable variance. So the controllable variance, we're going to start off with the total actual. So the total actual overhead. I'm going to put this in the outer column in C23 and say equals and we'll go up to the total up top, the 114,630. And then we'll have the flexible budget overhead. In other words, we're going to say what is the, the variable overhead types in accordance with the actual production level. So note that we made the budget based on 10,000 units. Actual was at the 11,250 or 90% of capacity rather than 80% of capacity. So we're going to have the variable items here. So, so the variable first. Now, if we consider all the variable, we're going to put all that, we're going to group all the variable items together. So if we do this, we're going to say, okay, here's the total variable costs. They change with the level of production. And we had our, our, our level of production at 10,000 that we made the budget on. So if we have the 52,000 divided by uh, 10,000 units, that would give us 5.2 per unit. Now the actual was 90% or 11,250. So we're going to take that 5.2 and multiply it times 11250 to get 58,500. We'll do that with a formula down here. We'll do that again. So we're going to put that in B25 and say this is equal to, and we will take the variable, uh, total variable costs, divide that by the 10,000 units. And then multiply that number. And we don't need any brackets because it's multiple and division. Multiplication division will go in the same order. Uh, but you could put brackets around that if you want. <laughs> and then say 11,250. I'm going to hard code this number actual units and enter. And notice I kind of deviated from what I told you we should do. It would probably be better if we broke out the 90 and the 11,250 in their own cells. So that we can refer to them in our data set below. So then we're going to go to the fixed costs in our flexible budget, just summing up the fixed costs, and they should actually go here. And that's going to be equal to, and they don't change. So the fixed costs are what they are. The 54,600, again, we're summing these up. That'll give us our total cost. And that's going to be these two, the sum of these two equals the sum of the variable and fixed costs and that's the uh, the overhead controllable variance which is going to be the difference between the outer column which is the total actual overhead minus the uh, total uh, flexible budget overhead 
So let's say flexible budget over. So we'll make it look a little bit nicer, hopefully like this. Next, we'll take a look at the volume variance. So for the volume variance, we're gonna start off with the total budgeted overhead cost. I'm gonna put that in the outer column. We're going to say the total budgeted overhead cost. It's going to be pulled from our information up top in cell uh, B19. That's going to be the 54,000. And then we're going to say the total fixed overhead applied. So total fixed overhead applied with the colon. We've got the variable. So we've got the variable overhead rate per direct labor hour. If we if we scroll up, then we're actually taking a look at the fixed overhead. So we got the fixed overhead and we're going to treat it as if it's variable in essence. We got the 54,600 divided by, and we're going to take the standard uh, direct labor hours, which is 26,000. So that's the rate we would use as if this was basically a variable item. So to do that, we'll say equals, and let's do this calculation again. So just putting it in there. And we'll say it's the 54,600 divided by, and then the 26,000 and enter. And that'll give us the uh, 210. And then we need the standard number of direct uh, labor hours. Now notice we have the standard number here, but we want to make it basically flexible. We want to flex it to the fact that we had 10,000 units or, or 10,000 units that we made the budget on. But we need to make apples to apples and make like a flexible budget calculation to what if it should be, what would be the standard if we were at 11,250 units, 90% of capacity. So to do that, we're going to say, all right, well, if we had our uh, 26,000 divided by 10,000 units, that's our 2.6. And if we multiply that then times the 11,250, we get the 29,250. So let's do that again down here. We're going to say, all right, this is going to be equivalent to the 26,000 divided by the 10,000. That would give us our per unit times. And then I'm going to have to hard code this number. Again, I didn't break it out like I kind of said we should, which would be 11,250. So our formula there then, B7 divided by B6 times 11,250. And then we'll give the total. So well, that will total out to be the total fixed overhead applied. And we're going to uh, multiply that. This equals the 210 times the 29,250. That gives us the 61,425. Uh, then we'll subtract these two out. We're going to say this equals, I'm going to take the bigger number minus the smaller number and come up with a positive difference. So this is the budgeted fixed overhead, and this is the total of fixed overhead that was applied out based on this 210 rate. So the difference between those two is the 6,825. The difference between these two items, we're going to call that the volume difference. And why is it the volume difference? It's a difference basically that's a result, of course, of the 80% volume uh, that we budgeted on to the 90% volume. In other words, the units, 10,000 units were based, the budget was based on the 11,250 that were the actual numbers. And then if we apply out based on this two hundred, uh, this two dollars and ten cents, then we come up with, of course, a volume variance of the 6,825. We'll call that a favorable volume variance. So then we got the overhead variance uh, report. So if we consider the overhead variance report, we're going to say this is the expected production volume, which was 80%. And then the actual was 90%. I'm just going to have to type it in there. 90%. And then the volume variance, we're saying, is going to be equal to this 6,000. Uh, 280, uh, 825. So then we're going to go down to our controllable variances. We'll have the flexible budget, the actual results, and then the variance. So here's our variable overhead costs. We'll start off here. I'm going to say this is equivalent to, if we go back up to our data, the variable overhead cost, I'm going to select this item and then uh, autofill it down. So I'll enter this one, then autofill the indirect labor, power, and maintenance. So enter. Then we'll put our cursor back on it and autofill it three cells down. 
Now we'll enter our flexible budget numbers. So I'll put our cursor in the indirect materials. I'm going to say equals. And what we want to do is change it from this, basically this 10,000 units to the 11,250 units. So I'm going to do that with, with a formula. We're going to take the 15,600 divided by the 10,000 units. And if we did this with a calculator first, it might make a little bit more sense. If we took the 15,600 divided by 10,000, that's going to give us 1.56 per unit. Then we're going to say, okay, here's the units that actually happened times 11,250. So then we'll get our budgeted numbers based on the actual units. So I got uh, the, the, the B10 divided by B6 times, I'm just going to hard code the 11,250. So there we have that. Let's, let's do this again. Same formula, same kind of idea for the indirect labor where we're going to take the indirect labor, which is the 26,000 divided by the 10,000 times 11,250 and enter. Now you could use autofill, but I'm just going to do this to emphasize the calculations. To autofill, however, you would have to use absolute references for this calculation. So then the power will say equals and scroll up to the items up top. We're going to say this number divided by the 10,000 units times the 11,250 and enter. And then we'll say maintenance equals and scroll up. We're going to pick up the maintenance divided by 10,000 units times the 11,250. So there we have those items and that total will be the total variable costs. Total variable costs we can sum up then equals the sum of the 17,550 down to the 2,925. Now we can compare that to the actual. So the actual numbers are, we'll say equals and then scroll up and we're looking for the actual numbers up top. And the first item is the indirect materials. The actual numbers are on this side. We've got the indirect materials, same number to start with, and then the indirect labor, the power, and the maintenance are going to be actual. So I'm going to say enter, and then I'm going to autofill for the other three numbers. So I'm going to say enter, and then use the autofill to pull down uh, this item, this item, and this item. Make sure that it's picking up what we want. So I'm going to use this little trick up here to get there, and that is in the formulas tab. And that's in the uh, formula auditing, these three items. And that just to check, that's coming where we want. That's going to be the power. That's going to be the power. So that looks good. Then we could sum this across. So I'm going to copy this across. And that'll sum up the, the column. I'm going to underline this, home tab, underline. And then we can subtract out. So we're going to say this equals the 17550 minus the 15.6 and enter. There's the 19.50 uh, difference or variance. We can copy that down. And then we can go to the home tab, font, underline. We can then copy the total across. So we'll copy the, the summing. There's the sum. And then the differences, we could see that this is the uh, budget. This is the actual. This, so this is going to be favorable. I'm going to have to hit F and a space to get the F alone. <laughs> and then we've got the the, uh, flex, the flexible budget higher than the actual. So that's good. And then so that's favorable. Nothing, No change here. And then this one is the actual is greater than the budget. So that's unfavorable. And then the totals, the uh, flexible is greater than the actual. So that's favorable. Okay. So then we got the fixed overhead costs are going to be next. And we could indent these if we so choose. We could indent that, possibly an indent here. So the uh, fixed overhead costs, we're going to say this is equal to. And again, we can scroll back up and, and pick the, the information up up top. Fixed overhead, rent and factory building. So I'm going to say enter and then auto fill down to the other two. Enter cursor back on it, auto fill down the other two, rent depreciation supervisor salaries, and then we're going to get to the total. Now we pick up the budgeted amounts. So the budgeted amount is going to be equal to on the fixed costs. So we scroll back up. It should be fixed, so they should remain the same. So I'm going to say that 22,000 
22,000. Auto fill that down. And then the actual results is going to be equal to, and that'll be on the right side. So the actual results, if we take a look at the rent, 22,000 and enter, we'll auto fill that down. Then we'll take the difference between the two. I'll take the actual minus the uh, budget and autofill that down. We can then underline these items. So I highlighted those three home tab font underline. And then no difference here, no difference here. This one, the actual results are greater than the budget. So that's going to be unfavorable. So we'll say that's unfavorable. Total fixed cost, we'll sum these up, equals the SUM of the 22,000 down to the 21,9. We can copy that across then, put in our cursor here and copy it across. The total is going to be an unfavorable difference. And we should probably be consistent with the difference. So I'm going to actually change these items here and reverse the formula. So it's going to equal the, the budget minus the actual and then we'll auto fill that down and underline and so then we have a negative for the unfavorable differences and then we'll have the total overhead costs bottom line and that's going to be equivalent to the variable costs and the fixed costs and then we'll copy that across and there we have that, and that's going to be unfavorable.